Hey, today's video we are talking about retaining walls. We're not just talking about uh, like high tech, high end, like holding back a wall of mud retaining walls. We're talking about a simple DIY retaining wall you can do at home with just basic garden tools and a little bit of sweat equity, okay? So here's the deal. There are seven steps to building a retaining wall and it's very key you don't miss any of these steps because they all have a specific function. So in this video I'm going to go through all the steps, all the details, a lot of cheats and how you can get a great looking retaining wall at a relatively low cost and why it's so important. So first of all let's talk about why we need a retaining wall. So what I've got here behind me is the deck. It's attached to the house, it's on footings, but the footings are being compromised and it's slowly sinking because the retaining wall that's here right now is falling over. Now, generally these old railway logs, the railway ties, they do a decent job of holding back dirt, but they're not designed for the kind of climate that we live in, which is freeze thaw, right? So every year, snow and water builds up in here, and then we'll get a day where it'll melt a little bit and it'll freeze again. And what happens is that ice ends up pushing the wall over, and this is over time, so we're probably talking about 20, 25 years that this has been here, but because this wall is only holding back dirt, and it has no drainage behind it, all right? It has no ability to remove that water when it thaws out before it freezes again. We have a major issue. Now, we're gonna be building a wall that's built for our kind of climate, and it's built for all kinds of climate. To be honest with you, whether you live in the south or the north, or anywhere in between, lots of water, or a little bit of water, this is a perfect system for you. So, not to worry, this is not climate sensitive information. Today is a one-stop shop fit for everybody kind of solution. Now, of course, before you build a wall, you have to understand that your foundation is very important. So you wanna dig past the soil and you wanna get down past the black earth to your basic clay or your dirt that's underneath. And the reason for that is the first course of brick, you want that underneath the ground, okay? And that'll be very important to help make sure that you've got a stable, solid base that you're building your wall on. All right, so step one is to dig a hole, all right? What we're going to be doing is putting GA, which is this mix of sand and stone. We're going to be putting that in the trough. You want to dig your hole with a flat bottom shovel. This flat bottom shovel allows me to scrape the bottom flat and the sides. If you disturb the dirt and you're digging with a spade and you're lifting it out and you've got a bunch of loose dirt left, you've got to pack the dirt in. If you use a flat bottom shovel, you don't have to pack the dirt and you can save yourself a whole step. So you can see disturbed soil needs to be packed. So if I'm digging like this and I'm making a big mess with the shovel, then I dig that out, I've got a bunch of disturbed soil left. But if I take the flat bottom shovel, okay, and I simply carve out my edge, then I've got a nice flat surface for, for my geotextile and my, my stone to sit on. And that makes it a lot easier for me to set my wall and I don't have to pack the dirt. Now the key to remember when you're digging your ditch is that you have to have a space wide enough for your retaining wall and the weeping tile, which is a four inch round pipe, plastic tubing with a sock on it that goes on the other side of the lower layer. So if you're gonna go 12 to 16 inches, you should be fine. Next, we put in our geotextile. Now this is landscape cloth, but remember not all landscape cloth is equal. There are about six different grades that I've seen on the marketplace. Some are very, very thin. I don't know what the point is other than just to sell people garbage so they have to come back next year and buy more. But this stuff here is super thick. It's like a plastic burlap sack material. And you can buy this on 50 or 100 foot rolls, three foot, four foot, six foot, all depends on your needs, okay? So shop around, make sure you're buying the product that's right for you. But the more you invest in your geotextile, the better quality product you have. Now you'll see, this rained overnight and my stone and sand mix is holding all the water. It's pretty dry underneath that, right? That's really important. This is like a water barrier, okay? And so all the water that collects from the rain is gonna come down, it's gonna hit this tarp, it's gonna stop there, and it's gonna collect in the weeping tile behind that sock. Very, very key. That is a water diversion system. So now all the water around the whole building is gonna come down here and head to my ditch and is gonna be removed from behind the wall and that'll preserve the integrity of this wall down the road from freezing and thawing cycles and erosion, which is so important. Now I've seen a lot of people build these walls with really tiny levels, resist the temptation. <laughs> a wall is a really long thing and you should use a long level, okay? So when I put my level in this dirt over six feet, I'm finding I'm really out of level. And that's fine, 
Remember, I want where my, my stone goes to be level, but behind it, it can be on that slope. That's not gonna be a real big concern. So what I wanna do with my first course is I wanna get my first three bricks level. I just got too much stone here. Okay, here we go. Let's find out. So that would be about there. I'm just gonna add a couple of shovels of dirt and I'm gonna use the hand tamper. Now this stool here, I think I picked these up for about 30 bucks. When you're doing a retaining wall, you don't need to go out and rent expensive equipment to pack it all in. You'll see lots of videos where they buy these little jumpers. The reality is the average man can grab this and put just as much pressure on that ground as that jumper does. It's a whole lot of nothing if you ask me. Now it might be a little bit easier if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of feet every day, but if it's a once in a while project, doing a hand tamper will work fine. The key is mix the sand and the stone with a little bit of water before you pack it and you'll be fine. Now today is incredibly windy, so I'm gonna hide in the trench as much as possible so you can hear okay. But here's the deal. You take your flat bottom shovel and you just take the top off of that stone dust, okay? And you rake it flat. You set your level, double check that you're in the right kind of neighborhood. Yeah, we're getting closer. We're gonna pack it. Still a little bit off on that end. There we go. Now just a quick word of warning, the first row is the most important of the entire project. It's also gonna take about 75% of your time. Don't be afraid to check and recheck and level and pound and check and recheck and level and pound. You want this to be perfect because once you put the stone on, there's very little bit of movement that you can do to get it in position. So when in doubt, always pack it a little bit higher than you need. If you need to, you can always pick up the stone, remove the stone dust in the GA, and then you can set it again. But you want to have it perfectly level because everything else will follow suit. And if you have any kind of bowing, you're going to have gaps in your wall and it's going to look horrific. Just to take a look at this material, this is a concrete paver. It's basically just a concrete block and it's designed to have kind of a rustic look, chiseled corners. It's got dimples and divots, which is really good for us because there are two kinds of stone. There's a smooth pour and there's a rough pour, okay? The rough pour, you can put the adhesive to go from layer to layer, and you don't have to do any additional work. If you're getting a smooth pour or a chiseled stone, you've got to actually take your quick cut and put lines in it so that when you put your adhesive on, it's got something to, to grab to between the stone layers. So if you can imagine stone, stone, totally smooth, the adhesive has nothing to grab onto. So you put the marks in there, and then the glue is growing down and growing up, and that's where you get your strength. In this scenario, we just set the brick. You can put a stake on each end and put on a string so you get a straight line, okay? But you wanna make sure that that stone is flat. If it, when you hit it, if the corners pop up, lift it up and throw a little bit of dust under there, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in four or five of these things and then confirm the level, all right? Right there, I already know I have a problem. All right? The whole back end is just way too low. So I put in a little bit of extra stone dust. Now I'm gonna pound it flat. Yeah, I like that. Hey.
Well, let's put this on and see how we do, how we're doing. All right. So here we got five stones, a six foot level, and we're in between the two lines, which means, relatively speaking, construction terms is level. But if you want to make it perfect, this is your opportunity to pick up a couple of stones, add a little more dust underneath, and reset it until it's absolutely perfect. You only get to do this once. So take the time. Okay. Whenever you're moving your papers, lift them all straight up and down. This one, and this one, and this one. I'll need a little extra love. Now, if you take your level and you go corner to corner like that, and if it's not level, you know your stones are on an angle, okay? So we're level this way, but front to back, we got to fix up the back line. All right, so just a quick recap, because I'm not very good at going step one and step two. Step one is dig your trench, flat bottom hole, save you a lot of time. Step two, put in your geotextile, wrap it in a U-shape for the whole hole. Step three, add your GA, level it off the best you can. All right, step four is first course of stone. All right, now, there's only three stages left here, which is awesome. The next step we'll call step five is the second course and all the consequent courses, it's all the same installation. Now what we're gonna be using here is an adhesive to bond these stones together. Like I said, the surface is very rough, so they'll grab really well. I wanna just make this point. Don't watch this video and go, well, I'm gonna glue the block together, I don't need drainage. Bad idea. This adhesive is really designed to bond the stone together so that during the process of backfilling and packing behind, it doesn't move the wall. That's it. That's what this is designed to do. If you don't have your drainage in place, frost is still gonna destroy your wall. I don't care how much of this glue you use, it's not designed to overpower frost. Trust me, frost can lift a freighter out of the harbor. It can sure as hell move your retaining wall. Now, let's get this in here. By the way, this is a construction adhesive 600 series. This is not PL premium or ultra premium. It's just the 600. This stuff is six bucks a tube versus 10 bucks a tube for the ultra. It's not necessary to buy the best stuff on the market. This will do the job, all right? And if you wanna learn all the differences about one caulking to the next and different adhesives, then click the card up here. We did a whole video on explaining all of the different selections that are available to you. Always use the right product for the job. You'll save a lot of money and you'll save a lot of frustration. Our first course of stone is designed to be flush or lower, just lower than the grass. When we're done, we're gonna probably put a little bit of soil in here and clean this all up nice. So we're gonna call this flush with the ground. The second course, okay, I'm gonna just offset this just a little bit. And I'm just gonna put a couple of runs of the adhesive on there. Now, no one's gonna see the first course when we're all done. So I'm gonna just offset a little bit to stagger my joint and I'm gonna go flush on the surface okay and we want to go straight down okay you don't want to set it and then slide it over you want to keep that whole bead of adhesive in one location let it squeeze into all the pores of the stone that's how it's gonna bond best And if you have a nasty chunk, make sure it's on the back side. You don't want all the broken corners showing. Whoa. Okay. Beautiful. One of the ways that you can save a lot of money is if you build your wall a little bit longer, because then you can step it down and you don't have to be doing all the cuts. <laughs> My scenario here is really simple. I'm actually building my wall a little bit lower than the, the, the dirt level that's three feet away. And I'm gonna be backfilling on a slope and then slow grading it over here as well and coming back with grass. The reason for that is if you have natural drainage running off the side of the hill, it doesn't put as much of a demand on the weeping tile system. And that's key. So all you gotta do is put your adhesive and go with a half stone installation right here. And now you can step it all the way up and grade your hill. Now these stones are going to be visible. So getting your 
half mark is important. You can always get a measuring tape and a pencil out if you need to. But I've put in enough tile in my life, I know what half looks like. <laughs> there we go. And straight down on the glue. Now, for every subsequent course of this stone wall, I'm going to suggest you go with about a half an inch back. Now, if you give yourself a half inch setback on every course, what you're going to do is you're going to buy yourself some mercy. <laughs> That's what I mean. If your wall isn't perfectly straight, you can make up for that over time by having a little bit of an adjustment curve back here. All right? Everything is chiseled, it's very organic, and it's very raw, and it's not incredibly linear, so that you've got lots of working room. If you try to keep your wall flush and you don't have a straight line, it's going to really scream because you're going to have coming and going. Okay? So, setting it back a little bit, just going to buy you a little bit of mercy. It really gives you nothing in the way of strength, but it is a cool look to see a little bit of texture on the wall when you're all finished. One of the reasons we started our ditch so low is because we're on a hill. We're going to have what's called stepping up. So I put my brick here. Now I'm too high. Now I don't want to dig out all the G underneath that because that's my base. So what we do here instead is we're going to fill up this area with, with the crushed stone and pack it till it's flush with this stone. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of work, eh? Okay. <laughs> now we're going to see this. Okay. We're obviously too high. That's where the rubber mallet comes in. Because we can just keep pounding this until we vibrate and move everything underneath it to where we want it. Note. Don't try to do this with a steel hammer. You'll just destroy your stone. <laughs> Remember I said about giving yourself a half inch back? If you do that, you can continue to use the level on every course of stone. You've got contact. Now, you'll see, I'm perfectly level. And these two are actually a little low. So watch, I'll put this on the original course. I'm perfectly level. But from here over, I'm actually low. You see that? It doesn't mean that I have to beat the middle down because then what I'll actually do is I'll have it a level and then a bowl. So, okay. There we go. Perfect. Now, remember earlier when I said that 75% was the first course? I wasn't joking, because you can do this all day long, right? Half brick. And just start slapping them in place. Remember, push that half back a little bit, about half an inch. Give yourself the mercy. Set and drop. <laughs> it's nothing easier than this once you get started. If you start perfect, you can build like you're on fire. <laughs> now, let's get on to the next step, which is the water diversion system. Very crucial. There are two major components. There we are. Okay. There you go. For a lot of you, you might not be familiar with what the concept of weeping tile is. Basically, it's a pipe that moves water. Around the foundation of the home, back in a long time ago, they used to use clay tiles, kind of like the roof, and they would build a, a system for water to be diverted to the city. Now we use a corrugated plastic tubing that's got perforations in it, and we put this fine fabric sock over top of it so that it'll filter out the dirt so they don't get sediment building up inside the pipe. Which means we don't want dirt around the weeping tile. Okay, so we're doing everything we can to keep the dirt away. That is why you're gonna end up using this. Half inch or three quarter inch clear stone, okay? This looks a lot more different than the GA. It doesn't have the dust in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover our weeping tile and this product. All right, 
and that is what we're going to use to bury our weeping tile. So let's just do a recap of what it looks like, okay? We've got a hole, we've got geotech style, and this is to keep plants and that sort of thing growing up in the system because plants will integrate into the weeping tile and cause it to clog. We also have a base layer of GA underneath, which is used as our leveling stone. We have our below ground surface base layer, and then our first course that you're visible from the outside. And then we're stepping up the courses, recessing it back, using the right 600 adhesive. Then we're gonna cover our weeping tile in our clear stone. And once you've got about three to four inches of clear stone on top of that, then you can go back with dirt, piece of cake. So we can finish off the rest of this hole, filling it in with the, with the GA, okay? We don't actually have to use soil. The plan is, we're gonna pop this off. We're gonna have all that GA fill in here. It's great for drainage. Get all that water down. The clear stone will help to filter it. The cloth will help to filter it. The water will run no problem. We'll never have a problem with freezing. This retaining wall will be here 100 years from now. All right, the bigger the project, the bigger the orders you can get. You can get everything from 20, 18 yards on a, on a tri-axle truck, right down to individual bags that are 30 kilos each. So it all depends. So you might have to do a uh, calculation on how much aggregate you need. And for doing that, you can actually go online. Google has some great resources so you can figure out how much of the different kind of stone you need. Piece of cake. So one of the last skills you're gonna need to know if you're building a retaining wall, if you want it to turn any kind of corner, okay, is how to cut your corners because you can't just cut all of your stone and have this one gap running all the way to the top because that'll allow a lot of water in there. And in our climate, allowing water to build up means you're gonna get frost and it'll start peeling apart over time. So overlaying your joints is essential to reducing the amount of water you let in the cracks and the gaps so that you don't end up with a frost problem. So we have our two courses of wall coming down. We're coming to our intersection. We're gonna be changing direction, and it's a 45 degree turn. Whenever you got a 45 degree turn, traditional carpentry, you would cut both pieces of material at 22 and a half. You add it together, it gets your 45 degrees. But when you're working with a stone on a retaining wall, what you wanna do is you wanna cut one piece 45 degrees, and here's why. You can alternate this way. See, this will be cut at 45, and your next piece of stone will actually come right up to it like this on that line okay bam and so if we can cut the bottom piece 45 degrees the next one will lay in full and then for the second course this one will be cut 45 degrees and then this stone will be full and they'll actually be alternating all the way up the corner so we're going to show you how to use the quick cut because this is one of these tools you can use wet or dry and it's a quick simple rental they run about 30 bucks a day. So if you can organize your, your, your wall to the point where you're ready to do all your cuts, one quick rental, and you can have a professional looking job and you can do it yourself. So what we've got is we've got our first two courses of stone here. And what I've done is I've laid this block where my corner is gonna be, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna have full stones at the corner so that I'm measuring the interlocking system here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this block and take add this gap here and I'm gonna cut two stones to fill this hole I don't like putting small stones in they always look cruddy and so it's kind of like in tile if you're gonna have a sliver you better to take another full piece off and cut them both and make it a little bit more manageable that's 14 and a quarter I've got my first stone marked at seven I need one stone that I can use to set up and I will Set my cut line just a little off center. And we're gonna use the quick cut to cut through that. Here we go. We're in business. Hey buddy. Make sure you're holding your material straight. Start on low speed and score your stone. got a line to follow, crank her up. That makes it 
pretty nice cut. Now we'll take our two seven inch pieces and put them in the hole. Now it's time to cut this one. Ah. Want to make sure you cut that nice and smooth because you want to have a nice tight joint. Here we go. Now you can see, now you want to measure from the front of the stone to the joint. We're going to go five inches. This one is going to be a straight cut. And the leftover of that stone, we're going to cut with the 45 so that we're alternating our joint. There we go. We'll get both cuts out of the same rock this way. All right, so most of you know I'm a safety second kind of guy, but honestly, cutting that in an angle without proper footwear and safety equipment is nuts. So, kind of like that. Now that's perfectly safe. we go. That's that row, right? We still need our glue. We're on a corner. Do that as well. Gets rid of the ability for water to work its way back behind the block. Now you see the pattern here. The next block that goes on here will be this one, cut in a 45. And then the next one will be like that again. And so you're always staggering your joints and you're getting a really good contact. And that's money in the bank. So guys, quick word of warning, when you're renting your equipment, the blades in most cases don't come with a saw. So if you don't own a blade, you have to purchase one or you can actually rent the blade depending on the place. Um, the place where I got this, they were selling blades. I know Home Depot will rent them. Now, of course, you can use these wet or dry. If you're just doing a few cuts like I am outside and there's a nice breeze, dry is fine. Uh, a little bit of dust isn't gonna kill you. But if you're gonna be working with this all day long, cutting a patio stone or something, then hook up the hose. Do yourself a favor and keep the dust down. Uh, as far as safety gear, you know, lots of guys on YouTube are showing you how to use your safety gear. You go ahead and use it if you need it. I've been working with high power tools, spinning 5,000 rotations a minute all my life. I'm not intimidated by the least and I know how to handle them, so. This is why I like production first, safety second. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all the information I got for retaining well. One brick at a time. Be happy with what you set. If you're not happy, fix it. Don't move forward. Remember, the greatest contractor on any site is you, all right? All you need to know is the right tools, the right process, the right materials, and then 90% of the job is integrity. And nobody gives a darn about your home as much as you do. And that is half the battle. So. If you want to see the other projects we've been working on recently, click the link up here. This is our most recent projects videos, and it'll get you up to speed with what's going on in our channel. We've got a lot of great exterior projects going on. Most importantly, everything we're showing you right now are ways that you can earn huge money renovating your home. All right, we'll see you soon.